Good afternoon. Welcome to this magnificent town hall building, which is known as the Old Courts Palace and the World Athletics Cross Country Championships Belgrade 24. Tomorrow, nearly 500 athletes from 49 countries will descend on Friendship Park, which overlooks the Sava and the Danube rivers, for the 45th edition of this global event, which I was reliably informed by our CEO, John Ridgen, last night, is the oldest of our WAS events. For the first part of today's press conference, we are joined by World Athletics President Sebastian Coe, the Mayor of Belgrade, Alexander Sapic, Serbian Athletics Federation President Veselin Virasimovic, and LOC's Head of Communications, Katarina Stevanovic. We'll first hear a welcome message from the city hosts and Mayor Sapic, followed by some opening comments by Seb and some words from Veselin and Katarina before we open to the floor for your questions, at which point I would ask you to raise your hands and state which publication you are from. So, Mayor Sapic, if I could ask you to open, please. Uh, Thank you. First of all, welcome to all of the present media, esteemed athletes. I feel a bit strange as a host and as a guest in our home. At the same time, I'm very honored and I'm glad that we have the opportunity to host one of the biggest world-class uh, uh, athletes in cross, and to greet our esteemed guests, Mr. Ko and Mr. Uh, Karavilova, Mr. Yavrosimovic, Brankovic, and all supreme athletes who are in this hall with us today. It is our great honor that Belgrade for the last couple of years now is the fourth time to be the host of a huge athletics competition. In 2013, it was the World Championship in Cross as well, correct me if I'm wrong, and then in 2017, European Championship in Cross and in uh, our uh, big hall, and then also in 2013, 22 so here we are again and we hope that we are candidates for 2028 as well and we have a great chance to be the host of this great competition i would like to wish all athletes a beautiful stay in belgrade have a good time reach great results and of course into tomorrow's uh, competition i wish our esteemed guests to have a good time in belgrade and I hope that our federation, as it was always the case, do everything necessary. We, as the city of Belgrade, are here to help every competition, and we will continue to do so. I would like to use this opportunity to thank you once again for inviting me to be your guest in my home, in our home. It is weird, but it's a great feeling. Once again, the best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Seb, if you have some comments. Jamie, thank you. And uh, first of all, <clears throat> thank you for hosting us uh, so graciously this morning in, in your home. Um, I'd love to see what your real home looks like, but this is, this is probably uh, an interim home for you. But uh, we're very grateful that you have hosted us uh, and let me immediately pick up on probably the most important thing to say. Uh, I'm delighted that we're joined by the athletes today for this press conference. Um, uh, many years ago, I sort of did what you did. Uh, and I know that uh, coming to a press conference on the eve of a competition may not be entirely where your heads are. Uh, but we're very, very grateful that you found time to spread the message. Uh, and the message is an important one <clears throat> because cross country uh, is, for me, uh, one of those events, one of those disciplines uh, that is actually often overlooked but is an inseparable, integral part uh, of the development pathway for our endurance-based athletes, even middle distance-based uh, athletes. So thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you for taking time out of what uh, will be, I know, rest and probably a little bit of rehabilitation. And if I may suggest, 
uh, an unusual observation to make on the eve of a cross-country championships, but tried to keep out of the sun. Um, I'm particularly pleased that I'm here uh, as president of World Athletics uh, at our second uh, WAS event of the year. Uh, we've had two world championships thus far. Uh, we've had the, European, the world championships in Glasgow uh, just a few weeks ago, and I'm delighted that my good friend and the president uh, of European Athletics, uh, Dobromir, uh, is here. Uh, and I'm delighted that our second world championship, uh, our world cross-country championships, will be here uh, in Belgrade, which is a city that we are now becoming very familiar with. Uh, it's a city that serves not just European, but world athletics uh, extremely well. Uh, and that's not a happy accident. It is because there is an outstanding athletics federation here. Uh, and I would also like to thank uh, my very good friend, uh, Vesa, uh, and his, what do I describe you as, Slobodan? Not his sidekick, but not his accomplice, not his compadriot, but the general secretary and somebody that really does know how to run a federation. So thank you for doing that. And to have the political support of the leadership of this country from the president down. Uh, is, is hugely important. Um, I'm looking forward to this event um, and looking forward to it because I'm also conscious that we gave uh, Belgrade a very compacted time frame uh, in which to deliver uh, on these championships. These things happen, but from the very outset, uh, when this was discussed even as recently as the Budapest World Championships with President Vucic, um, that the commitment was immediate, it was instant, uh, and our ability to be here uh, with over 50 countries and nearly 500 athletes uh, on the 24th edition of this championship, given such a relatively short space of time in which to deliver these championships, um, it's not quite a miracle, but I'm very grateful that occasionally miracles do happen. So thank you for that. Uh, and to all the athletes that are here, again, thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward not only to seeing your performances tomorrow, uh, and some of you I know were, uh, some of them were uh, dignifying us with their presence at the World Indoor uh, Championships, and I know we'll be looking to use this as a platform for the Olympic Games uh, later on uh, in July and August uh, in, a, in a few months' time. Uh, on the course, uh, this is a course that uh, is really rather unique. Uh, it's on the shores of the, and the confluence of two of the world's most famous rivers. Uh, it's a course that I think the spectators are really going to enjoy and be part of. Uh, so spread the message. Uh, please come out onto this course. World Championships that come to a city uh, are few and far between, uh, and already Belgrade is now establishing itself uh, with a reputation uh, as a big event city and one that serves athletics at both European and world level extremely well. Uh, and I know you have ambitions to do even more in future. We like ambitious people. That's why we're here and that's why we're going to enjoy uh, the next couple of days uh, with you uh, in this lovely city and the hospitality that you always give us. So thank you very much. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Vesa, if you would like to say some words. Dear guests, friends, athletes, media, welcome to the press conference regarding World Cross Championship held in uh, Belgrade, Ushtje tomorrow. It is my pleasure and honor to greet the mayor of the city of Belgrade, Mr. Alexander Shapic, as well as um, athletic legend, the president of World Athletic Federation, Mr. Sebastian Ko. Serbia is the only country in the world that for the last two years achieved to be the organizer of two world championships. If we take a look at the European Championship in Cross in 2013 and European Championship in the whole 
in 2017, World Championship in 2022, that were uh, claimed as best organized championship. I have no doubt that this championship tomorrow will be claimed to be one of the best organized. More than 500 athletes arrived to Belgrade from 51 countries, followed by more than 1,000 athletic workers. More than 50 countries has bought the rights to uh, transmit live the event, and undoubtedly tomorrow Serbia and Belgrade will be in the center of the sports events. I would like to thank all of those who assisted in organization of such a prestigious event. I thank to the President of the Republic of Serbia, uh, the Government of the Republic of Serbia, the City of Belgrade, and to domestic sponsors, company Voda Voda and Dunav Insurance. Also, my great gratitude we owe to the World Athletic Federation that entrusted us uh, with the organization of this prestigious event. Having in mind the previous organizations, we gained their trust and we showed to the entire world that Serbia and the city of Belgrade can be organizers of huge world-class events. Thank you very much and enjoy in tomorrow's competition. Thank you, Vesa. Finally, Katrina. Uh, uh, Thank you. It is great honor and pleasure for me to be a part of the organization that within previous 11 years has successfully organized four huge events, European Championship in Cross, European and World Championship in Hall, and now in the record time, the World Championship in Cross. For the last 10 years, our team was the same. And I think that besides great work and devotion of our team, this was the key to our good organization. As we like to say, what is good needs no changes. Also, I wish the best of luck to all competitors in the name of the entire organization of the World Championship, Cross Championship. Thank you. Thank you. So now we will open to questions from the floor. If you would like to raise your hand and let us know who you are, please. Thank you. Strakin uh, Ilic, Telegraph, a question for Sebastian Koch. Uh, this is the fourth major competition awarded to Belgrade, the second in the last two years by uh, World Athletics. Uh, why do you keep coming to Belgrade? Because we really like being here. <laughs> No, look, Belgrade uh, has always consistently bid and shown interest in our events. Uh, we don't lightly give a championships just to a city because I happen to like the restaurants or have good friends here. Uh, there is a good reason why we come here. Uh, the federation is world class. Uh, the political leadership at every level in the country uh, endorses and does more than that, it invests in our sport uh, and once you have those two ingredients uh, and you have a welcoming, hospitable local community and great volunteers, then you have the perfect storm uh, and that's why we come to Belgrade. It's, uh, it's, a very, it's a very simple proposition but we know when we are here we're in good uh, and safe hands and the Championships tomorrow will be an absolute exemplar of the qualities that are available to us in this city and this country. Uh, hi, Seb. Jonathan Galt here from Let's Run .com. Um, We're in a stretch of three world cross countries in four years, which I imagine will give you guys a lot of data about the meet and how popular it is among federations and fans. I'm wondering, how do you feel about the state of world cross country right now? Uh, do you think it continues to be viable, and are you confident it'll be still around in 10 years? Work. We've got work to do, there's no doubt about that. Um, and look, 
I will say this. Um, I'm looking uh, at the athletes in front of me. Um, some of them are from Africa. Africa consistently supports our world championships. Uh, they come to Europe when they're here. They would go to the United States if they're there. I would like to see more of our European nations uh, supporting and, and traveling to these championships, not only because they're our championships, but I actually have always genuinely believed that cross-country properly used in the modern training regime is a ageless, a timeless concept. So, yeah, we need to continually make that message. I think possibly in future working closely with those federations that understand that concept and are prepared to take the events on, maybe in a slightly adapted form. Um, that's for tomorrow and days ahead. But yeah, work to do, but it's still an important property uh, and has a historic place in the his, uh, historic place uh, in our athletics landscape. Hi Seb, it's Cahal Dennehy, I'm with Flowtrack. Just wanted to ask, um, in terms of World Cross Country in two years' time moving to January, could you explain a bit the reasoning behind that and I guess how you think this event will fit into the global calendar in the years beyond that? Look, I think, you know, what is the big challenge for every global sport at the moment? It is staging events in a sensible and sequenced way doing so in a world that is changing climatically by the year and probably posing more problems as we go ahead. Governments are not grasping the issue that, in the way that they should. So this is a challenge that me and my successors for many years are going to be dealing with. Uh, but look, the coherence of a calendar is really important. Just a few weeks ago, as you know, we announced uh, and the council supported the concept that our championship, our year, years where at all possible should finish on a global event, a world championship or something that is equivalent to a world championship where we've got a billion people watching. Uh, that is the concept that runs right the way through our thinking about the calendar. So whether we uh, look at, and we've discussed this with European athletics about being a little bit closer to their own championships, having a critical mass uh, at that time of the year of cross country. Uh, it would allow us then not to cause too many uh, calendar challenges or even training challenges with those athletes that are endurance based and would like to do an indoors and a cross country season. Uh, and the two are not mutually exclusive. So that is roughly the thinking around that, but the coordination of the calendar uh, is one that uh, we, are, we, we were committed to four years ago, is uh, deep in our strategic thinking and our strategic plan, and we will go on doing that because A, it's necessary, and B, I think it lends greater understanding uh, and rhythm to the season for our many, many fans around the world. Any further questions? We have a microphone over here. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. This is Bernard Rotich from. We can hear you. It, it was. No. Yeah, thank you so much. This is Bernard Rotich from Daily Nation Kenya. Uh, we've had, uh, this of course is a climax of a world uh, cross-country events. We've had a world cross-country uh, cross gold tours. What has been the impact according to world athletics? Do you think more talents have been realized using these uh, cross-country events? I'm sorry, I didn't get the last bit of that. Has... Okay. What is the impact on the cross-country events that World Athletics has been organizing in terms of world uh, cross-country tours and uh, gold tours and bronze and uh, silver? Well, they're important. They've been profound. Uh, and we looked at cross-country um, six or seven years ago. We decided where possible we wanted to... Uh, we wanted to inject a bit more endurance, a little bit more jeopardy, into the courses, 
Uh, our first attempt at that in Aarhus uh, in 2019, I think, uh, for the World Cross Championships there, uh, was, was very successful. It's really important that whether it's uh, an indoor event, an outdoor event, junior or senior, uh, that an event leaves an economic, social, media, environmental, even sustainable uh, uh, mark on, on local communities. Uh, the days are gone where you can just afford to stage an event and say, well, that was great, everybody had 48 hours, 72 hours of fun, and, and the caravan left town and didn't come back again. There's a lot more to it. So we have a, an economic uh, impact unit uh, within the organizing, uh, within the headquarters. Uh, and that's important for two things. Firstly, it allows us to be able to take that model to other cities and explain uh, what that meant for local hotels, restaurants, social media, um, the impact on tourist numbers, the impact on further legacies that were generated off the back of those championships, maybe even an uptake uh, in the number of young people wanting to take up the sport, joining athletics clubs. All those things are now quantifiable. Uh, and we now use that data uh, in the assessment of cities that want to bid for our championships as well. So we do take that very seriously and cross country has an important role to play in that. We were in Mombasa uh, in 2009, as you would well remember, for a world uh, cross country championships there. Uh, and I think the Kenyan Federation decided that it was at that point that they wanted to also look at the potential to start staging other events. You then had the under 18s then you had the under 20s and I know Kenya is also ambitious one day to stage a world uh, outdoor championship. So all these events are not events standing alone, they have a contribution to make to the overall narrative of the importance of big events in, in large communities from Seb's comments. What are you hoping to see across this weekend in Belgrade and the impact this event has on the city? Of course, this kind of events are extremely important for the city of Belgrade and I believe, we believe that the fact that we have a good weather that we didn't have a couple of days ago, tomorrow, there will be lots of people in the streets and they will use the opportunity to see the best uh, athletes in the world and Mr. Yosimovic said that we have the best of the best here with us and I believe they will enjoy this after winter when we have first good weather people get out on the streets so I expect the huge number of people to be on the streets tomorrow and all events of this type also encourages tourism and the economy of the city in its uh, specific ways. So that's why we try hard to be good hosts to everyone, not only sports events, but other cultural events as well. So we expect, first of all, a beautiful sports day, a beautiful manifestation with the top class results. And we expect that both competi competitions competitors and the visitors will enjoy it. Back to Jonathan, please. The, uh, the latter point you raise is something I know that the Competition Commission uh, is looking at, but from my perspective, uh, getting uh, the World Cross Country Circuit, the tour underway, was really important. It, it, in a way, it goes back to your first question, which is that was you know, some, of the, uh, some of the injectable 
innovation that we were looking at uh, around cross-country. We will continue to do that. Uh, and on balance, I think it has been successful. Uh, but that's, I'm not going to preempt the work of the Competition Commission. They wouldn't like me to do that. But I do know that that is, a, that is something they're currently looking at. Uh, I think we have, do we have one last question from the back? Nope. Okay, thank you very much. We will we'll finish it there and uh, we will switch over to the athletes in a couple of moments. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. If we can please take a seat because we're live on YouTube, please. Thank you. And it's not the end of this press conference. Thank you. If we can have a seat, please. Um, in the, the middle aisle needs to be cleared. Photographers, please. Can you sit down? Please, can you move out of the middle aisle? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you and uh, welcome to the second part of this press conference ahead of the World Athletics Cross Country Championships here in Belgrade. Um, we're honored to have here with us four of the leading athletes who will be competing tomorrow. Once again, thank you for taking the time for being here with us today. Uh, we have Beatrice Chibet of Kenya, the defending uh, World Cross Country Champion. We have Caroline Grovdal of Norway, the European cross-country champion. Uh, we also have Jakob Kiplimo of Uganda, also the defending world cross-country champion uh, from Bathurst. And Elzan Bibic of Serbia, who's the national champion. So thank you so much for being here. I'm going to start with Beatrice, if I may. Um, Beatrice, as we said, you are the defending cross-country champion, uh, champion, sorry, and I understand uh, retaining the title tomorrow is on the top uh, of your targets for 2024. Is that correct? And how hard have you prepared for these championships? First, I want to thank God for this privilege being here in Belgrade. And secondly, I want to say 
I'm so happy and getting an opportunity to come again after winning a 2023 World Cross Country Championship in Australia. And it's not easy to prepare. And you know in Kenya it's very competitive to qualify and get a chance to come and represent your country outside here. And I know we come with a strong team from Kenya. And my target is to run best. I know it's not easy. We have a lot of competition between the different countries. And my prayers is back, we go back to our country with our title. Yeah. And Beatrice, you mentioned 2023, and indeed, uh, last year has been exceptional for you. You won in Bathurst, I think you came third in Budapest, and you won again in Riga. Um, you set a 5K world record on the, on the road. You won Athlete of uh, the Year in Kenya. Um, how exceptional was 2023 for you, and how has this shaped you as an athlete and as a championship performer? What I can say about 2023 was a good season for me. I started my season in Australia, winning a World Cross Country Championship. Then we come to World Championship in Budapest, where I won a bronze medal in 5,000. And we go for Riga, winning a 5K road race, breaking a world record in 5K again in Barcelona at the end of the year. I can say it's uh, preparation was good, especially through cross country. I can say cross country motivated me a lot. And together with support from my coach, my management, my country, that's all I can say. And uh, um, Beatrice, you mentioned your teammates and your nation, Kenya. Um, obviously, you're always very strong when it comes to World Cross Country Championships as a team. Um, what can we expect from Team Kenya tomorrow? Uh, as I told you, we have a strong team from Kenya. And with teamwork, everything is possible. Teamwork leads to a good results. Going back home with a lot of medals, and going back with a team title again. Um, thank you for now, Beatrice. I'm going to move on to Carolyn. Carolyn, thank you for being here uh, at the press conference today. In my introduction, I said you're the European cross-country champion, uh, but we have to be accurate. You actually are the three-time European cross-country champion. Yet, the last time you competed at a World Cross Country was back in 2010, is that correct? Um, how important it is for you to step up to the world stage um, tomorrow? Uh, it's not on? Okay, yes. uh, yeah, there. Uh, first, I'm looking forward to run tomorrow. Uh, I do like to run cross country. <laughs> Uh, and I've done it a lot in Europe, um, and this time uh, it's, uh, it's, the world is in Europe and it's easy for me to go here and uh, yeah, I want to, want to test my form and the winter training and uh, I'm really looking forward to, yeah, to test my form tomorrow. And I think you're the only representative from Norway here in <laughs> Belgrade, so I think we can say you are Team Norway tomorrow. Uh, Norway, Norway has had very successful years in athletics recently. How would you assess the popularity of athletics in your home country in Norway? How big has it become? Uh, for sure, it's, uh, it's bigger now than, than ever. Uh, we have the ski sports that's most important in Norway, of course, but now and um, because we have so many good athletes in Norway, uh, it's become more and more popular. So uh, it, it's fun to be a part of the Norwegian athletics. Um, thank you, Karen. Just like everyone else on this stage, um, you are a multi-talented runner. You're able to run competitively on every surface, cross, track, road. But if you had to rank, <laughs> All three of them. Which one would be your favorite and why? Uh, that's a very difficult question. Um, 
uh, no, it's very difficult. Now I think um, I really like to, to run at the roads. Uh, but of course, track has always been my, my number one. But now it's more, more and more roads, uh, 10K and half marathon. Uh, and cross country is, is something I, I feel like is something from my childhood because I was training for cross country skiing and I have always been very good at it. But it's, it's something I, I can relax when I'm, when I'm doing it. So I think it's, it's very fun. But I like to chase the times that track and roads. So it's a difficult question. So no number one? Pick one. Maybe roads. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to that one. Um, thank you for now, Caroline. Jakob, thank you for being here. It's nice to have you. You're also the defending champion from uh, Bathurst last year in Australia. What sort of form are you ahead of tomorrow? So, first of all, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I think to me, actually, I have done a lot of training couple of months and months, but I think actually to me, I'm excited to be here to, to race tomorrow. I think to, to compete to run a, a good race. I think some of us in this room remember you from when you won a World Junior Cross Country title in Kampala, right? Uh, on your home soil. Um, and then um, in Aris, the next World Cross, I think Joshua got uh, the gold. You won in Bathurst, as we say. So the last three editions of this championships, we've always had the Ugandan uh, national anthem being played. Um, do you think we can have that anthem played again tomorrow? I think to me, actually, it's, uh, I think it, uh, it will be good now when they hear how our flag is be raised. I think even tomorrow we are going to see a national anthem for Uganda be raised. You're going to have to teach us uh, the lyrics because we need to get used to that one. <laughs> um, I want to ask you the same question as Carolyn because you're also, you know, very successful on the road, on the track. You've won medals on every surface. So if you had to rank road, track and cross, what would come number one, number two, number three and why? I think, actually, about the, I think the question is a little bit difficult. It's, I think to me is about how you prepare yourself because you see a lot of athletes training. I think it is about the training program, how you, you are doing, and you can manage to compete all the races. Yeah. But is it hard to balance the three disciplines? How hard it is for you to train, to train for all three surfaces? I think to me it's, it's not hard. It's about just the, the, the training program. Yeah. Thank you, Jakob. Um, we'll come back to you, and I'm going to now move to Elzan. Elzan, I'm going to speak English, but yes. if you want, you can answer in Serbian. I'm sorry, I haven't learned Serbian just yet. Um, you'll be competing in front of your home crowd, of course. How special is it going to be tomorrow for you to be competing in front of uh, your home nation? First of all, uh, first of all, I have to say that I'm really proud in my country and my federation because they succeeded and have been succeeding years ago to organize world-class competitions and it is my pleasure to run in my country before my audience. Not everyone has this chance, but as I say, both for me and my colleagues from the national team, we are having the opportunity to be in our home country and compete. I hope this will be a trend in the future. I will uh, run a mix in the cross, which is uh, most attractive, becoming more and more attractive discipline in this kind of competition. We will do our best to justify the expectations and together with our people here in Belgrade and the entire country, to present Serbia in, uh, at its best. And I hope that both runners and the rest of the coaches will be satisfied with the organization. 
and I wish the best of luck tomorrow to everyone. Elzan, you mentioned the mixed relay, so you're competing in the mixed relay tomorrow with your teammates. Um, do you already know team tactics? Are you going to start? Are you going to run third leg? Can you share a little bit of uh, your team race tactics for tomorrow? Yes, for the first time I will run the relay. I will be the first as uh, the runner and after that I will turn over the relay to my teammates and I hope that we will reach the expectations and to be in the first half of all the teams ranked. I believe we will succeed in doing so. We wish you best of luck. As the hometown uh, man, you must be very familiar with the course and the terrain. And I understand it's going to be quite hot tomorrow. Um, can you give your competitors here and your um, athletes' friends some, some advice about tomorrow? Are you expecting really fast races? Wow. I'm really glad that my country succeeded in gathering this many champions here in, in Belgrade. For sure they have a lot to see in addition to our track which is really, really good. And I believe they will have a good time while staying in Belgrade. That They will be satisfied with everything that Serbia has to offer. And I hope that in future competitions, they will be glad to be here in our country. Elzan, um, do we have any questions from uh, the floor? Please raise your hand. Yes, we have one from the centre here. Uh, it's Cahal Dennehy from Flow Track. Question for Caroline. Um, you're one of the Europeans who was willing to come here. Why for you was it important to get on the line and do you have any message for other top European distance runners who more and more almost seem hesitant to come and take on the world's best? Um, I didn't get the first question, but uh, yeah, uh, I know it's, um, uh, it's difficult for people because they have the indoors and Mars is, is a time where many people are on training camps, so I think maybe that's the reason why some don't um, want to run this race um, but yeah uh, I like cross country and, and since I've been the European champion so many years I thought it would be uh, something fun to do to try to to run the worlds also so yeah thank you Caroline do we have other questions yes Jonathan question is for Beatrice you were fourth in the Kenyan trials earlier this month, were you going 100% in that race or did you leave anything in reserve for this one? <laughs> okay, what I can say is I told you we come with a strong team from Kenya and I cannot say it was my 100% or 90% or any percentage but the important thing is to qualify to get a chance to come and represent my country outside here. So what I can say is that tomorrow may the best athlete win. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, I'll have one last question for you all. Obviously, we're all focusing on um, tomorrow's races but um, there's a, a little small competition coming up, uh, the Paris Olympic Games this summer. Um, which distances are you each planning on racing in Paris? And maybe not just the one distance, maybe doubling up. Um, Jakob, what are your plans for Paris? Five, 10, 15, eight, no, I 200? Think I, can, I think <laughs> to me, I will be doing double, five and 10. Five and ten. Carolyn? Yeah, same, same for me. Five and ten is, um, is my goal. Beatrice? By now, I'm sure for five. Only five? Sure for five. Not yet confirmed for ten. You have to try. I mean, <laughs> they're doing it. You can do it. <laughs> 
And Elvan? Elzan, sorry? 50 or 5,000. Okay. Well, you are all going to be very busy this summer, but first and foremost, we wish you all the best for tomorrow. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye.